new law has been passed in California establishing a decertification process for peace officers. As a former officer and a current trainer, I've seen firsthand the uncertainty and apprehension this law has sparked among the people I know and work with. Regardless of how well you try to handle a call, there are times where complaints come through. That is an unnerving when you're out working. You're like, okay, I'm not gonna go out and look for things or pull over cars just in case, like, what if we make a mistake? Because we're human at the end of the day. And then we're gonna be held not only through IA, we have to worry about post clearing us as well. In this series, we will unravel the complexities and real world implications through discussions with stakeholders looking at it from multiple viewpoints. We are now no longer passengers in this journey. We, we now must take more of an active role. And we had some of the same concerns with the, when we first started using body-worn cameras. Most of the time, the camera has supported the actions of the officers. And so if they're aware of what those areas of misconduct are, they don't really have anything to worry about. That the process is there for a reason. It's there to ensure that your rights are protected. And if you're doing everything right, you're going to come out on top. In a conversation with officers from across the state alongside POST staff, members of law enforcement voice their concerns and search for answers from those who know. There's, there's questions as to what's going to qualify um, as serious misconduct. And, I mean, can that change from reviewer to reviewer? I've never seen like a hard definition as to what they're looking for. Um, that could cause a lot of stress and anxiety. We drill into the details through one-on-one -on -one interviews with post experts who are working these cases. Passing SB2 was another piece that personally now affects them. And I think that they all need to know what steps and what processes post is taking when we look at cases that are submitted. I think it's important for them to know that. We're taking the case as it is, and, and we look at the underlying behavior, and we are stridently neutral. It helps the communities to have some voice into the process. I think it's one of the strengths uh, that gives Post its ability to be trusted in moving these cases forward. Engaging directly with Post executives and board members, we hear their perspective on how they think this legislation came about and what they have done to prepare for the impact this has on both law enforcement and the community. Your hairstylist can lose their license, a doctor, a lawyer, when it finally dawned on somebody that there was no way to decertify a peace officer. That was kind of mind blowing. I think that's what the community is looking at, is that they're being held to the same standards. They don't want to see them being able to lose their job here, but then be hired at another agency. It's about integrity. It's integrity in the profession and integrity in the process. Trust in the fact that we understand we're dealing with individual lives and livelihood. The changes in certification and decertification have illuminated more than just a procedural shift. This journey is not just about a new law, it's about re-examining our commitment to the community, law enforcement, and each other. Watch this Post On Scene investigative series now.